Well, good morning, and welcome to our live stream of Peterborough Free Methodist Church here on June 27. I am Pastor Daniel, and it's great to have you here worshiping with us. So we're excited that uh, pretty soon we're going to be able to have more people in the church. Uh, things open up officially on June 30th, uh, but once that's open up, that's when we're going to engage the logistics of uh, what it takes to make sure uh, people are coming into the church following all protocols. One of those things is we're going to have to have people pre-register for our worship services. So what we're aiming for is July 11 for the first day when we can have uh, back to the capacity numbers we are permitted. So that's 50 people upstairs and then another 25 could be downstairs in overflow. So we'll pre-register for Sunday the 11th of July beginning on Monday the uh, 5th of July. So that week of the 5th is when we'll start taking pre-registrations with the aim of July 11 uh, being in here together. So looking forward to that time. Not that I haven't enjoyed our handful of uh, folks who are here Sunday by Sunday making sure the live stream happens, but uh, it would be nice to have uh, some more people around worshiping together. <clears throat> uh, this morning we've got some of our regular elements of worship happening, uh, but also a few other things. Uh, we're going to uh, greet the grads of our church. This is the time of year in the school year where it comes to a close and some graduate out of their grade on to the next thing. So we're going to make mention of them and honor and pray for them this morning. Uh, we're going to make mention of the letters to our civic leaders today, uh, June 27th, the last day that we would like you to drop off letters. If you want to include a handwritten note with the one that we will send officially from the pastor's office here at the church, uh, you could still today drop that off at the ministry center uh, in the mail slot in the door, and we'll make sure to include those when we send out those letters of encouragement to those uh, civic leaders that we're going to honor that way. Uh, so those things are going on this morning. First, I want to let you know that we have received a thank you uh, from Autonomy Valley School. So this is a painting of their school that was done by a local artist. And uh, the school has given us this as a thank you for the different ways in which uh, we have contributed to the school, helped out the school, especially in uh, running the Breakfast Club this past year. Now, how were we able to run the Breakfast Club? Well, there was only a small window of opportunity where we were able to have some volunteers go in and put together some bags of breakfast that could then be taken to classrooms and kids could partake of those. Uh, we weren't able to uh, feed the kids directly and interact with the kids, but we were able to prepare those bags and have them taken to uh, the classes. So here's a note of thanks that came along with the picture. Here's what it says. Thank you for the ways that you supported us during this school year while on site and during remote learning and brackets, especially in prayer. We hope you all have a wonderful summer and look forward to reconnecting in September. So those uh, few volunteers that went from our church, we had Bonnie and Harvey. Uh, they went over to the school. Kara and Michael went over to the school. Lena was over at the school helping, and so was Tom. So uh, our church's thanks uh, to those among us uh, who took the time to go and minister to the school that way. Uh, the school appreciates it. The kids appreciate it. And uh, uh, we are glad to serve the community in this way, aren't we? As we continue in, prayer, in worship this morning, uh, let me pray. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for who you are. We thank for, for your watchfulness over us, over our community, over our world. 
uh, we understand that uh, new freedoms, uh, the reduction of cases of COVID, we know this is not only of um, medical teams and of vaccinations, but we know this is your hand of grace upon the world. We thank you for those who have done the research. We thank you for those who have come up with a plan. We thank you for those who work really hard on our behalf. We thank you for uh, the relief from symptoms that the vaccinations bring. We know that, though, uh, you are in control of all these things. It is by your grace and your provision that you sustain life. And so we honor and thank you. But even in the midst of it all, uh, we were still able to help and invest in the community around us in various ways, uh, some bigger, some smaller. And here we were able to minister to kids at Autonomy Valley School here in our neighborhood. So we thank you for the opportunity. We thank you for your call on our church to minister to this community. But that they are grateful uh, is pretty cool too. So we, we pray that the work we did would continue to reveal your love and your grace uh, to them, and that they wouldn't just recognize uh, something about a generous church, but they would see the generous God uh, who is over and in and through our congregation. So, Lord, be in us, be with us, be guiding us, be directing us, inspire us, call us to service to others and to love of you with our whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. And as we worship again today, uh, even remotely one with another, we ask that you would be pleased in our worship, be honored and glorified today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to have Betty play a hymn on the piano. Words will be on your screen so that you can join along with us. So won't you sing this hymn with us together?
Daddy always saw me Hold your head up high It's just one moment In all of time If you can't see it Just close your eyes And believe it It's all inside so keep on keeping on till the walls come down Reaching higher till your feet don't touch the ground Hear the power of praise flowing out your mouth Let me hear you If you need freedom pennies and silver dimes so rest your head child it'll be all right just keep knocking and we shall find so keep on keeping on till the walls come down reaching higher till your feet don't touch the ground hear the power of Calling out your mouth, let me hear you If you leave freedom
We are indeed proud of each of these grads. Thank you, Pastor Holly, for putting that together. It's uh, uh, so cool. Thank you, families, for contributing pictures. Uh, So neat to be able to catch a glimpse into uh, the lives of each one of these young people that led them to uh, grad time. Uh, Savannah, congratulations on graduating grade 8. Savannah is going to be attending Holy Cross uh, in the fall. Congratulations to Tyler. Also, graduating grade 8. Uh, Tyler's going to be attending TAS in the fall. And congratulations, Hillary, graduating grade 12. And Hillary's going to go to Trent in the fall, Trent University. She's going to study biomedical science in the medical profession stream. So uh, may God be with you as you uh, tackle all of that at university. And Chris... He's graduating grade 12. Congratulations, Chris. And he's going to enter the workforce in September and also take an online course in real estate. So I'm sure for each of the four of you, uh, God has great plans for you. It's been such a privilege for our church to be part of your lives and have you as part of our church family. And uh, remember that God goes before you. And he lays open the road before you. Follow his paths. Follow his ways. Uh, Lean on him always. Uh, Trust in him. Never let go of him. He will never let go of you in whatever you do. So as you graduate, congratulations. And I'm going to pray for you now. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for these young people. We ask that you would continue to watch over them continue to build them, continue to grow them and mentor them in your ways. We thank you for Savannah and Tyler and Hillary and for Chris. And we ask that you would open for them your will and your ways forward. As they think about next steps in life, as they think about a transition into a new thing, we all have nervousness and fears and anxieties and uncertainties about what lies ahead, but help them to rely on you and understand that you are always faithful. Help them to walk in the ways of Scripture. Help them to discern the Holy Spirit. And in that way, let them fulfill the calling which you have on each of their lives. You have built them into unique individuals, Call them to specific things to build your kingdom in this world. Help them to fulfill that calling. Lord, I thank you for their families who love them, their friends and uh, elders who mentor them, and the various influences that they've had in their lives uh, to come to know you as their Savior and to follow you in your ways. Lord, be with them. Uh, Bless them, we ask. And in Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Pastor Holly here. Where is Sam this time? Sam. Hi, Holly. Sam, come on. It's time for our time with the kids. Okay, I'm coming, but I want to make an entrance, okay? I cued some music in your phone. Can you play it? Oh, really? Yeah. Go ahead and play the music, Holly. Here I am. Oh. Sam. Hi, Holly. Hi, Sam. Am I going to say hi to the boys and girls? Hi, guys. Oh, sorry about that, everybody, I guess. Sam's just preparing for his graduation from Sock Puppet Academy. Here I am, Holly. Oh, Sam. How, well, how was my walk? Was it slow enough? It, I think it was very dignified. I don't want to be too fast. No, no. I, I want everyone to see me. I think, I think you lost the moment for all that it's worth, Sam. Uh, well, Sam, did I hear that you have actually been given quite an honor? I have, Holly. I think that... That's why I have to walk just perfect. Okay. Sam, if I'm not mistaken, you... Were voted valedictorian I was. for your class. I was. Excellent. That's a lot of pressure, Holly. 
I have to say the right thing. Yes. I have to give a speech. Yeah. How, how, how's that going? I'm working on it. Maybe I could share it. I think everybody would like that. We could let you practice on us. What do you think? If you guys are good with that at home, give us a thumbs up. Oh, thumbs up, Sam. Okay, okay. let's hear it. <clears throat> Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to celebrate my graduation. Your <laughs> your graduation. I just tease and all. I... Sam, I think you need to like acknowledge everybody else that's graduating too. We have some special graduates even in in the church. We I wanna... know, I know. I'm just kidding you. Yeah. <sighs> oh, Sam. Okay. All right. Sorry. Ready? As you were saying, carry okay. on. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, fellow graduates, and distinguished socks. Today marks a special moment in our lives. And as we look back as what has brought us to this moment, remember that it is not the number of breaths we take, but the number of moments that take our breath away. So let us remember to live, laugh, and love. After all, you have to look through the rain to see the rainbow. Sing like no one's listening. Love like you've never been hurt and dance like nobody's watching. Because yesterday is history, tomorrow was a mystery, and today is a gift. That's why we call it the present. Now let us keep calm and carry on. Shoot for the moon. Even if you miss, you'll land among the stars. So in closing, life is not about waiting for the storm to pass. It's about learning to dance in the rain. And finally, remember this, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Written by Salt Puppet Sam. Sam? Yeah. Wasn't that a great song, poem? And that was something else, all right. Yeah. What did you do? Look up every cliche in the book? No, I picked out all the important parts of life, Holly, and I shared them with everybody. Mm. People may have heard them before, but to apply them to this exact moment is very important. People need to hear these words so that they stick with them. Well, there, there was a lot of... Deep thought in there, Sam. I like to call it passion. Passion, yes. Well, you know what, Sam? Our words are important, aren't they? And, yeah. Sorry, just going to fix your tassel there. And words can inspire us. They can encourage us. And they can help us live life to the fullest. They can. They can help us to be encouraged. But words can also hurt, can't they? They can. And so we need to be very careful about how we use our words, both spoken and written, right? Um, especially in a world where everybody thinks that they should put everything out there for the world, whatever they're thinking. Oh, on the Facebook. On the Facebook and yeah. other like places. Like airing the dirty laundry, they call it. Yes, yes. You don't want to air your dirty laundry, especially if you're a smelly sock. No, right. And... How embarrassing. Yes. So we need to choose our it's words. It's a misrepresentation of socks, Holly. And that's right, not every sock feels the same way, do they? No. But we need to be careful about how we use our words, and the Bible talks about that in quite a few different places. And you know what? I like this illustration. I've got some toothpaste here with me, Sam. Are you going to tame your tongue with that? Well, I'm going to pretend that the toothpaste is our words. And I'm just going to pour some out here. And... Now, I'm just going to try and put this toothpaste. You're using Rob's breakfast plate. Oh dear. I would like to point out for everybody that it is a Hello Kitty breakfast plate. I will wash it. I'll make sure it's fine for him for his breakfast. Okay, Holly. Um, so, I now we've, yeah, we've got your words out. Got our words out. The bad words. The bad words. Whatever words. Right? But especially bad words. And... Uh, no, I want to take them back. Maybe if you squeeze the container the other way. Squeeze it the other way. So it sucks the air in. How do you squeeze a toothpaste? I need to no, squeeze. No, the other way. Put your tongue on the up. other side. 
on the sides. Oh, holly. You cannot put toothpaste back into the tube. Just can't do it, Sam. And you know what? That's like our words. And we can't take them back. And so that's why it's important to put out words that are encouraging, uplifting, because words that are hurtful and unkind and grumbling and complaining, we can't take those words back. They're out there. We can ask for forgiveness and hopefully recognize that we've sometimes maybe said something that was hurtful or upsetting to somebody else, but there's no taking them back once they're out. Yeah. And so that's why it's very careful to think before we speak and to be careful. You know what another illustration could be? What's that, Sam? If we set your tongue on fire and I sprayed you with the hose. Uh, yeah, I heard fire and hose and my tongue. All of the same I could sentence. dress up as a fireman, Holly. Yeah, no. What a nice fire hat. No. You make me a fireman. Do not hat. be looking for that illustration because it's not going to happen. We're not. You call it. We are not setting my tongue on fire, Sam. Taming the tongue. Sam. By Sam and Holly. Sam. Back to the, the words in the toothpaste. Um, so you know what? Sometimes we say things that are hurtful. And sometimes we're on the receiving end of hurtful words, right? It's not nice. But it, it's not. But it's also important to realize that sometimes people speak before they think. Yeah. And loose lips, we it's call important them. also. Don't be a loose lips. It's also important, Sam. To forgive people if they've said things that have hurt us. Right? You, you sing a song, Holly. Remember? Your mom. Your mom taught you a song. If you can't say oh, nothing Oh, nice, yes. Say it nothing. went something like this. Shh, if you can't say something nice, take a bit of good advice. Shh. Say nothing. And it is a good advice, right? Yeah. If you don't have something nice to say, don't say it because you can't take it back. And it might hurt somebody. You sing that around here all the time. <laughs> Maybe that's not a good thing. All right, but it is a good thing to stop and think about what we're saying, right? It says stop, drop, and roll. You gotta stop, drop, and think. Stop. Maybe you don't need to drop, but stop and think before you speak. Yeah. And, Red light, green light. And choose words that are kind and uplifting and encouraging and inspirational. Yeah, just like all my messages. Just like all your messages. Well, Sam, do you have any last parting words for us before we go this morning? Go oh, in I... peace, Crispy. Go in peace, Crispy. All right. Well, go in peace, everyone. And choose your words carefully and speak words of peace, love, and kindness to each other. Have a good day, everyone. Bye Congratulations guys. to all our graduates. Congratulations, guys. All right. Have a good day. See you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> we will be singing I Will Rise in the Key of D.
title belongs in the key of B. Oh man, I thought uh, when I was listening to Sam uh, rhyming off all those cliches, I thought he was going to forget the best one as a true Canadian, but he got it. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take, right? Had to quote the great one. Uh, I need to let you know as well that next Sunday is Communion Sunday, so uh, please make sure to have some bread and some juice available. And uh, my pastor's network, so six of us, got together this past Tuesday, we recorded a communion liturgy that we will present next Sunday for all of our churches to participate in that way. So communion uh, next Sunday, uh, that'd be July the 4th. Uh, but this morning I want to bookend our letter writing campaign to civic leaders with a second uh, sermon. On the civic holiday of May long weekend, I asked us to engage in a letter-writing campaign to honor the civic leaders who are over us. And on that Sunday of May 23rd, uh, we talked about Romans chapter 13, verses 1 to 7. 
where the Apostle Paul asks the Christian church to be subject to the governing authorities and to give honor to them. All the more astounding when you consider the authoritarian and inflexible system of Roman rule, and even worse when you look at history and realize how hostile Roman governance was to the Christian faith. And so if the Apostle Paul could honor his government in his day and his civic leaders in his day, then we certainly can do it now. Well, today as we draw near to the next civic holiday, Canada Day, it's time to draw our letter writing idea to a close and then uh, get those sent out in the mail. And the sermon text to reflect on that as we do is Ephesians chapter 4, verses 29 to 32. This is about the heart, the conduct, and the demeanor of the Christian life. So I'm going to read in Ephesians 4, 29 to 32. So I always encourage you to have uh, your own Bible with you and open and following along, especially just in case you want to uh, make any little notes in the margin. Uh, some pastor made this point one time or underline a key verse or any of those kinds of things. Um, but it's good practice to have uh, your Bible with you and, and over time familiarize yourself with it. Okay, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29, starting there. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Uh, let's pray. Lord, these are, are fun and flowery words um, when we think about them, when we, when we consider the big idea and how much better our world would be if people behave this way. But then when it comes to our own selves, uh, we make extra provision, e except for the circumstance I was in. I was justified in saying this thing or, or that thing. Now, Lord, help us to measure ourselves properly uh, against your scriptures. Help us to look at and reflect on our own conduct and how much we match the character of the new life in Christ and help us to walk always in His ways, uh, even when it's difficult. Lord, let us examine this scripture. Let us be inspired by it and let us be changed by it. In Jesus' name, amen. The orientation of scripture is to Examine carefully your own conduct and worry less about someone else's. It's the same as the sentiment in the do not judge passage of the Sermon on the Mount. There Jesus says, uh, why do you worry about the speck in someone else's eye when you should be worried about what? What's the other side of that analogy? Of the speck in your own eye? No, in the log in your own eye. Don't worry about the speck in their eye. Worry about the log in your own. And so if we're going to consider our own conduct, if we're going to take seriously the mandate to examine ourselves, <clears throat> look at this very high standard that's here in this passage, Ephesians chapter 4, 29. Let no corrupting talk, not no corrupting talk, come out of your mouths but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. And let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. And in the midst of all those verses, we have that core value. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Those are the words that are used. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. 
But what about all those things in life that get me riled up? What about when I am wronged? When somebody does something against me? Oh, what about when there is injustice? What about when there is a need for a change? Is there not such a thing as righteous anger after all? Did, did Jesus not overturn the tables of the tax collectors in the temple? Well, certainly and absolutely we are to abhor sin. Certainly Christians are to rail against injustice, protect the most vulnerable, and bring hope to the hopeless, have empathy for the downtrodden, and resist the evil one. But we need to do so as bringers of peace, not contributors to the chaos, right? What does it accomplish when late-night comedians mercilessly degrade politicians? How is that helpful? What does it accomplish when our coffee shop chat turns to accusatory gossip about political leaders and civil servants. How does that contribute to anything? I get that opinions are strongly held right now. I get that people's lives and well-being are even at stake. But so are our souls. We will stand before God to be judged one day. Not for how we might have been mistreated by others, but for how we've reacted. How we treated them back. And I believe there is going to be an accounting for this era of easy criticism. Facebook and Twitter and blogs, some of it even anonymously written. We live in an era of consequence-free character assassination except it's not consequence-free. You and I, the Christian church, were held to a higher standard than the media and the bloggers and the late-night comedians hold themselves to. Shall I remind us what that higher standard is? Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. And so let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. And I will confess, I am talking to myself here too, for sure. I cannot read past these words without the conviction of the Holy Spirit. I replay conversations in my mind where I have exuded bitterness, where I have torn down instead of built up, where my voice has added to the global hum of corrupting talk. How can anyone read Ephesians chapter 4, verses 29 to 32, and not review the words they said, especially about those in leadership over us? It is so easy to fall into bitterness when we're in disagreement, especially if the decision has literally affected someone in a negative way who you love. Right? What, if, what if a government policy is, is ratcheted up and then this person over here suffers because of that policy? Or, or that same policy is ratcheted down and someone over here suffers directly because that policy is ratcheted down? We need yet to watch and be careful of our own conduct and our own selves. Sufferings bring frustration, yes. And frustration builds in us all those things we're not supposed to have. Corrupting talk, bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, slander, and malice. And then what if, what if the traditional ways of legal response do not work? What happens when a citizen uses their vote 
but the person they did not choose still gets into office? Or what happens when a citizen writes a letter to an official in charge, but it goes unanswered or rejected? What happens when a citizen appeals to an ombudsman, but they do not really fight on your behalf? What happens when a citizen meets a political leader face to face, and that political leader is polite, yet dismissive? What happens when a citizen does the highest form of legal protest that anyone can do by running for office? And what if they indeed win, but then still find the system is slow to change so that their agenda does not move forward? Well, all of those halts in movement, those run-ins with a closed door or a polite smile, create an internal frustration. And then we want to vent that frustration, which often leads to the corrupting talk spoken of here, and the bitterness. But Scripture demands from us a better way, doesn't it? And for good reason. Look at the paragraph that precedes this one in Ephesians chapter 4. I'm going to read it in verse 17 to 24. I'm going to read that paragraph. Now this I say... And testify in the Lord that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardness of their heart. They have become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. But that is not the way you learned Christ. Assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him, as the truth is in Jesus, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life, and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Why should we react differently than the rest of the world? Because we do not walk as they do. We do not foster a callous attitude. Instead, we walk in Christ, which means we put off the old self and we put on the new self. It means that we deal with frustration differently than the world does. It means that we carry the ball down the field with a trust and an optimism that God is in charge and human roadblocks are not forever. I recently read a small biography about Jackie Robinson. You might recognize that name. He's known as the first African American to play uh, professional league baseball. Segregation was the rule of the day. There was, in fact, a whole entire different league for African Americans to play baseball in, and Jackie Robinson just did that. He was in that whole separate segregated league. And even though he was a star athlete, he was a star athlete in football, he was a star athlete in track, he was also a star athlete in baseball, but even still, he could only play in this secondary league because of the color of his skin. Well, there was a general manager of the Brooklyn Dodgers named Branch Rickey. Manager Rickey was unique in his time because he wanted integration. He saw no reason that a talented African American should not be able to play in the major leagues and even on his very own team. But the manager needed the right kind of player to recruit to do this groundbreaking work. A a player who would break through that ceiling, and you know the punchline, Jackie Robinson was that player, but you might not know about the conversation that manager Ricky had with Jackie Robinson. And so I want to read you an excerpt out of the biography because I think it's really well written. Um, It's really evocative, and you can just imagine this conversation uh, taking place. Uh, There's about five paragraphs here. It's a little bit of a chunk, but I do want to read this to you. And uh, uh, you'll get an understanding of the conversation that happened between these two men. 
When manager Ricky asked Jackie if he was up to the job, he wasn't talking only about playing great baseball. He knew Jackie could do that. What he meant, he explained, was that if Jackie were to become Major League Baseball's first black player, he would be in for a tremendous amount of abuse, both verbal and physical. Jackie said he was sure he could face up to whatever came his way. He wasn't afraid of anyone and had been in any number of fist fights over the years when anyone had challenged him. But R manager Ricky had something else in mind. I know you're a good ball player, Ricky said. What I don't know is whether you have the guts. Ricky knew he meant something dramatically different from what Robinson was thinking, so he continued. I'm looking, Ricky said, for a ball player with guts enough not to fight back. According to Ricky, not only would Robinson have to tolerate such abuse, but he would need to be almost superhuman and to commit himself to never, ever hit back. This was at the heart of the whole enterprise. If Jackie could promise that, then he and Ricky could make it work. They could open the doors for other black players and change the game forever. Jackie knew that resisting the urge to fight back would really require a superhuman effort, but he was deeply moved by manager Ricky's vision. He thought of his mother. He thought of all the black people who deserve someone to break this ground for them, even if it was difficult. He believed God had chosen him for this noble purpose. He believed he had to do it for black kids, for his mother, for his wife, for himself. A manager of a secular baseball team in a secular league has the boldness to ask someone else to receive abuse and not hit back. To receive scorn and not lash out. To receive slander and not retaliate. It's a bold ask. But can you imagine what would have happened if Jackie Robinson let frustration win on the first day he played in the major leagues? Imagine the headlines in the papers the next day. Experiment failed. Detractors proven right. Jackie Robinson gets in fist fight in his first ever game. Segregation must continue. You can just imagine. But as it turns out, Robinson's humility and calm in the face of attack was the very thing that inspired those around him. His own team at the beginning had its share of doubters. His own team watched as other players of other teams um, threw racial slurs at him, uh, slammed into Jackie Robinson with their cleats first when they slid into base. And his own team began to recognize the injustice. And by seeing that happen to Jackie, they became staunchly turned to his favor. But why? Why would Jackie even say yes to this? Why did he agree to endure such unfair hardship? Where did he draw his strength from? Well, it was from Scripture. It turns out these two primary characters in the story of the desegregation of baseball in the 1940s, these two were both men of strong Christian faith. And in order to convince Jackie to take this stand with him, manager Ricky opened up a passage of scripture from the Sermon on the Mount. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 38 and 39, Jesus says, You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist the one who is evil. But if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, then do what? turn the other one also. When trying to turn the opinion of a nation and of an institution, the game plan was not vicious attack. The game plan was gentle and persistent courage. Do you have the guts to not 
fight back. Manager Ricky's example was Jesus. Jackie Robinson's example was Jesus. There are indeed two ways to get things done. One way is the way of critique and criticism and condescension, bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander and letting those things drive you. These are the ways that grieve the Holy Spirit, says the Apostle Paul in Ephesians 4, verse 30. And the world uses those tools. But they are not for you because you are a redeemed people. You are of a better way. And the better way is one in which our words build up and they give grace to those who hear. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. This is the very reason Jesus did not let his disciples bring swords when he was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane. This is why Scripture tells children to honor their parents, servants to honor their masters, and fathers to not provoke their children to anger. This is why Jackie Robinson did not fight back, and this is why Jesus went to the cross. Jesus could have fought back, but he did not. He went to the cross. Redemption, salvation, the will of God, the kingdom of God. These things are not built on corrupting talk, on anger and bitterness and slander and malice. Therefore, let us not fall into these things, especially as we talk about our leaders, because we do so often. And instead, let our words promote grace. Let them pour out blessing. Let them give honor and gratitude. I want to read uh, two more lines in the Jackie Robinson story here. As manager Ricky had predicted, Jackie quickly became the regular target of vicious name-calling and race-baiting. But with God's help, Jackie was able to stay above the fray and avoid responding in kind, despite the tremendous temptation to do so. And that season, Jackie played in 151 games, and somehow he got through all of them without a single incident of retaliation. Is there ever a cause to disagree with the government? Absolutely there is. Of course there is. Is there ever a time in which we should voice our concern? Of course there is. And you're free to do that whenever you want. Is there ever a time to recognize injustice and call it out? Absolutely. Christians have always done that throughout our history. But... It is amazing what redemptive work can be done by a group of people who determine to tell the truth, yet they tell truth in the spirit of honor. They tell truth in the spirit of building up. They tell truth in the spirit of giving grace. And they tell truth in the spirit of love. Let us be those people. Amen. We're going to have Betty come and uh, she's going to play another hymn for us and we're going to sing along to that and then we'll uh, close our service uh, by reading the letter that we will send to our civic leaders and we will pray for them.
So why a letter writing campaign to our civic leaders? No real other reason than uh, typically we would have written three letters and just offered people a chance to come up to the front of church after service and, and put their signature on the letter so that these leaders would receive the letter with everybody's signatures on them. Um, but we cannot be together in that manner. So the idea just came that uh, maybe we can invite the folks of our church uh, to send a letter along with the official one that will go out. So these will go out this week. Here's what uh, the letter from my office will say. On the Sunday before Canada Day this year, our church took some time out to pray for you. We believe through Scripture that it is our duty and privilege to uphold those in service to the community with prayer. We further believe that God has called and ordained our civil leaders and they deserve our support and respect. And so on that very important civic holiday of Canada Day, we did pray for you. Beyond that, we recognize that leading people is a daunting responsibility, one that is not entered into lightly, one that is only entered into with much soul-searching and a deep desire to contribute to the community. We want you to know that we recognize and appreciate your own desire to serve our city and surrounding area. Thank you for the hours of work that you pour into us and for the dedication you have to the task laid out before you. Thank you especially for your extra effort under the pressures of this past year. God bless you as you serve him through serving us. And that is from our congregation and we're going to send three letters, one each to Mayor Diane Therrien, MPP Dave Smith, and MP Miriam Monsef. So let's pray for them and then our service will be closed for today. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we do understand that you watch over and are in control of all things. And there is nobody in leadership over people who you have not placed there. We understand that from Scripture very clearly. And so these ones who are over us, we understand that you put them there. And so we want to honor you by honoring them. And so we lift them up to you. We ask that you would give them wisdom. We ask that you would give them the energy day by day. We ask that you would help them to sift between good decisions and bad, right ones and wrong, especially at a time when so many things uh, are unclear, so many questions are up in the air, so many voices clamor for attention, and so many divided opinions all exist at once. Give them wisdom, not just any wisdom, not human wisdom, but give them your wisdom. Help them to recognize, notice, and follow after the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, for each one of these leaders, for Mayor Diane, for MPP Dave, and for MP Miriam, Lord, we ask that you would draw them to yourself. They are individuals. They are persons. And you love them. Help them uh, to love you as well. Lord, we lift them up to you and all those who are over us, and all those in positions of responsibility, bless them, encourage them, keep them, equip them. And in Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining in worship with us today. Uh, next week, again online with communion, and the following week, July 11, if everything goes to plan, uh, we hope to see many of you here in the building, worshiping with us. God bless you. Have a great week. Uh, thanks for joining in. Bye now.